All right, let's see if this works. Um, all right, uh, I have started working on R2-D2 again. Hopefully there's enough light in here. Um, the one thing that I really want to get done, I'm not concentrating on getting everything done, just whatever I can. I'm not trying to put pressure on myself or I'll get burnt out. But I really would like to have the center vent and speakers set up. Um, so that's what I'm concentrating the most on right now. And while I was doing it, uh, I thought I'd just make a video about a couple things. Uh, one thing is about painting things and getting things ready to paint that I don't know if I've mentioned before. And that is trying to keep straight edges wherever you can. Um, let's face it, R2 was originally made out of metal and even though we're doing plastic versions, we'd like it to look as much like metal as we can. Some of us, some of some people actually are printing it just straight, leaving all the layer lines and being proud of the fact that they 3D printed an R2-D2, which I am completely on board with. That's also um, an awesome thing to do. But I'm trying to get mine um, just as, I don't know, realistic, I guess, uh, to my abilities. And one thing I really noticed is keeping edges sharp really helps plastic not look like plastic. So just a few tips when you're sanding something that has a sharp edge, try not to go over the edge or you'll round the corners. Um, that's why I don't tend to use sanding sponges very much. Um, if I just have something in my hand, I can keep it flat fairly easy, or I might use a hard sanding block. Um, so it's less like a foam sanding pad that just wants to fold over contours. Um, another thing I'll do is when I'm putting putty in areas to fill gaps or anything, I'll sand off the face, and then I'll go in and sand the interior keeping in mind both directions that I'm trying to keep a sharp edge. So get all the excess putty off one face and then get it off the other face and hopefully ending up with a still sharp edge when it's done. Um, this is also, especially on these, also on the face, you can see, depending on how you print it, this is got a nice bow to it, it matches a contour of R2, so you get stair-stepping effects, which you can, hopefully there's enough light to see here with this uh, glazing putty, dark glazing putty in the bright orange filament I used. And again, I'm trying to keep a sharp edge on the inside and the outside, so when I put my filler material on here and then sanded it, I tried to keep as flat as I could going around that way and then also around this way and then by hand this way. So I've still got sharp edges and it's not rounded. Um, the other thing that will round edges is too much paint. That's something that I tend to do. I tend to put uh, too thick paint coats on and you'll find that the paint builds up and it rounds the piece that you're painting just due to the paint buildup where it wants to build up on the flat area and near the edges just due to gravity whatever it, it thins out so it, it'll be bubble looking instead of flat that you want so just a couple things i thought since i haven't done any real work on r2 in a couple years and now i'm starting to get back into it, a couple things that i wasn't sure i had mentioned um, the next thing I want to talk about real quick is the speakers. Now this is the vent from the Michael Badley Mark III design. And you'll see there are four holes in each of these uh, vent areas for a three inch speaker to bolt in. On the inside, you can see it's recessed, so you can put a bolt 
through there, it'll be recessed and not interfere with the flat bottom of the vent piece when the vent piece is installed. And then I believe that uh, at the time that I printed this, the D-Rock three inch speakers were what was recommended, D-R-O-K. Um, the problem is a lot of people were saying they just don't get loud enough at a convention, you can't hear it. So people weren't really liking the three inch D-Rock, but there was a post where somebody at the time uh, suggested these GRS 3FR-4 three inch full range speakers. Because they were three inch speakers, I figured they would fit the holes here that are for the three inch D-Rock. Unfortunately, and again, if there's not enough light and my angle is off, I apologize. I don't have this camera. It's just my phone. It's not hooked up to a monitor, but you might be able to see that the holes just don't quite line up. You couldn't actually bolt that together using a bolt. So that's where I just put those away the last time I was working on R2 and decided to look into it later. Um, the options for this, a lot of speakers don't have round holes. They have oblong holes. So there's some adjustment in mounting your speaker. These just happen to be just a straight hole. So I might be able to get some kind of a Dremel grinding wheel in there and maybe make these oblong because they need to be deeper inset to line up with the holes, but I figured that I'd have to put a paper bag with some tape over it so I didn't get metal filings all in the speaker and mess the speaker up and didn't know how good my grinding skills would be and if I would go too far, if I could even get a nut on it, even if I did extend them long enough for a bolt to come through. Um, so then I remember that Jason Charlton uh, has designed a really nice two-piece adapter setup so that you can use three and a half inch speakers on this Mark III uh, vent. And I actually don't know without looking at the manual, the instructions, which way this goes, but these are the actual pieces that I printed out and they mount up to the stock holes, but they let you mount a three and a half inch speaker. So I thought, well, that's really cool. I wonder if those mounts will let me mount this. And no, there's no way that they're gonna work with the this three inch speaker. So at that point, because I am trying to get some work done, and as I said, I really wanna get the center vent and the speakers done at a minimum this year because it's, I've got movement of the dome, I've got movement of the droid, but audio, I just had those speakers hooked up and laying in the bottom of the droid. So having the center vent with the speaker panels, speakers all set up, a uh, quick disconnect for the audio um, would just be awesome. And also it's such an iconic piece to R2 that having it painted and installed will really make him look more finished than he is, which is currently pretty much the body and the legs with no center vent, no greebles along the bottom, no ports or anything in them. So, excuse me, I just went ahead and bought the speakers that Jason Charlton used. Um, his printables, these files are on printables and also Thingiverse, and he links to Amazon for the speakers he used. I believe they're American Bass three and a half inch speakers. Um, I've also heard other people with different three inch speakers and they also work. It just all kind of depends, I guess, mainly on this depth because a lot of the three and a half inch speakers have the cone that sticks out, protrudes out further than the surface of the speaker. So you can look that up yourself, what speakers work with it, but I just figured I'll print the mounts out, I'll buy the speakers that Jason used and I won't have to worry about it. So. Those should be, speakers should be arriving. Um, not that it matters until I get this thing painted and the vents done. I won't be attaching the speakers. But after I did that, I realized that there's a thing called a speaker spacer. 
and speaker adapters. And what I could do is probably take a piece of three quarter inch wood and cut a circle out that would fit over these holes so I could use wood screws inside to attach the wooden circle here and then just twist the speaker and use wood screws to hold the speaker to the wooden ring. And the reason twisting the speaker is because if you kept it straight with the holes, your wood screw going down and the wood screw coming in from the other side might end up hitting each other. But if you just offset it like that, you can still get this whole speaker panel in and out um, through the front of the droid without removing anything. And it provides enough space between the two holes that it would work. It would just offset the speaker by, I'd probably get a half or three quarter inch thick, probably three quarter inch piece of wood. So they'd just be sticking out about that far. So I realized that after I ordered the three and a half inch speakers, and I decided to just go ahead and use the three and a half inch speakers since I got them printed out the mounts for it. And they're gonna be better speakers than these three inch ones. But that is an option that if anybody else is wondering how to do this, that's an option for you. Um, I did go back to the Facebook page and I tried to look up speaker mounts, center vent, um, all those kind of things on the Facebook page and Michael Badley's Facebook page and didn't find a ton of advice or ideas on how to mount anything other than three and a half inch speakers, which again, that's fine if you want to do it that way. But if you do end up ordering some kind of three inch speaker, but they don't quite line up, that's an idea for you if you have the means to uh, make, or I think I saw even Googling um, speaker spacers, I think I saw where you can buy some wood rings. You just have to make sure they're that diameter, which on a three inch speaker, I don't know if that's three inches between the holes or I'm not sure where that three inch measurement comes from. I didn't bother measuring these, but yeah, just a round piece of wood that you can screw from the inside of the vent, screw it to attach to the back of the vent and then use it to wood screws to attach the speaker to that wood standoff ring. And all it would do is bring the speaker out about three quarters of an inch instead of being directly attached to the vent. So that's about all I had to say today.